Hi, welcome to Heart Alchemy Yoga. My name is Gloria Baracchio, and we are coming at you from the Springs, LA, in the downtown arts district of Los Angeles. Thanks for being with us today. Today, we're just going to take you through a 30 minute sequence for beginners, yoga for beginners. Uh, anyone who Maybe this is your first time. Maybe you just want something a little softer, mellow. You just want to get into your breath, come into relaxation, chill out for a second. Uh, this video is for you. So thank you again for joining us. Um, I'm happy to have my dear friend, Dennis. He's um, going to be my student today. And we're just going to relax together. I highly recommend you practice with your good friends. I uh, hope you all are watching together. Um, yoga is always nicer with friends and there's you know more of an energy that's created with more breath and more hearts in the same room together so really encourage that uh, we're going to begin our practice today just with a short ohm and when we ohm it's really about coming into your body coming into your breath softening the mind using sound vibration. Um, you don't have to think of it as anything spiritual <laughs> other than the fact that um, there's spirit and energy all around us. But the OM is, is really a way for you to drop in into your practice. So let's just begin with one OM and that'll help us to calm our breath and calm our mind a little bit. Okay, so let's bring our hands to our heart in prayer. Take a deep inhale. Let's close our eyes. Exhale. Good big inhale again. And exhale. And inhale. Exhale. And on the next one, let's all be inhaling. Oh. And slowly open the eyes. That usually makes us feel better and it charges the space, kind of calms everything down. So today, we're just going to start in a seated position. So you can see Dennis and I are sitting on blankets. Um, that helps to open the hips a little bit more. If you don't have one, that's OK. Um, but if you have tight hips, I do highly recommend you sit on a bolster or a block. Um, hopefully, you can invest in one if you can. So today, we'll just start to warm up with what we call Sufi circles. And we'll just circle from the hips. This one I like to teach to everybody, whether you're a beginner or not. It seems to really get energy flowing from the base of the spine. Uh, we have a lot of tightness in our hips from sitting, standing, walking. So it's a great way to loosen all of that energy and actually start to move it up the spine. And you'll hear me remind you a lot to breathe. <laughs> Um, my first yoga teacher always told me that if you're not breathing, it's not yoga. So I can hear him. He's wonderful. I love practicing with him because he has such a great breath. So we'll inhale on the way forward, exhale on the way back. If you can, try to keep the spine tall and long, right? Imagine that the spine is a wooden spoon and it's stirring the pot of your pelvis. Yeah, so we're really stirring it up. Stir it up. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so then we'll reverse the circle when you're ready. And as we're doing this, you can also start to feel a lot of the fluid moving in your elbows, wrists, shoulders. And it's very subtle, but it's doing a lot of work for you, actually, a lot of benefits especially when you're breathing. Think about the breath in yoga is it's oxygenating your blood, your cells. And then when you link it with movement or stretch, it's like you're opening up 
highways or channels to get more oxygen, to get more life force, prana, right, to these different areas of the body. That's why you can see yogis who've been practicing for a while, or you'll notice for yourself that you'll start to feel more energized, your body will start to feel younger, maybe look younger, because it actually has a lot of life force moving through it. So a few more breaths, inhale on the way forward, exhale on the way back. Good, and take a big inhale to center, inhale, you can close your eyes, lift the breath, lift the breath, hold it, hold it. And exhale. Good. So a great way to start when you're beginning yoga is we'll get on our hands and our knees. And one thing you want to always remember is try to stack your bones, right? So your shoulders are going to be directly over the wrists. And then your hips are going to be directly over your knees. And you'll hear me a lot in the practice today of you know, get your wrist in line with your shoulder, ankle in line with your hip, right? We're trying to find lines, lines of energy, right? So from here, warming up the spine, we're going to inhale. It's a cat cow, we call. This is our cow. We're going to inhale, open the heart, droop the belly. Good. Exhale, round the spine, chin towards the chest. Good. And really lift the middle spine up towards the sky. Good. Inhale again. This is your cow. Drop the belly, drop the rib cage. Good, exhale. Good, round the spine. Lift up the back of the spine, good. And then you can go at your own pace, right? Inhaling, look forward. Exhale, down, good. And just keep going with that. We wanna really listen to your breath, move organically. You'll notice how your breath might move faster or shorter than mine, or you know, if you go to a class. Everyone is different. We're all different, right? We have very unique bodies, unique needs. There's different trauma and memory locked in every person's body. So we have to experience our yoga and our breath and our movements differently. So I'm always going to encourage you to really move at your own pace, especially as a beginner. And I might even say, especially in as a, an advanced practitioner, because sometimes you forget. So it's always a good reminder, go at your own pace, honor your body, honor the moment. Good. Okay, so from here, we're going to inhale, droop the belly. We're going to exhale, tuck the toes, take the hips up to our first down dog. Good. So you can see in this down dog, especially if it's your first down dog, you really want to almost put your weight more into your legs. So you want to take the backs of the legs toward the back wall. You want to lengthen your tailbone, take your tailbone away from your head. There's almost very little weight in the hands. And I'll show you the action of what this is when I adjust Dennis. So this is a very common adjustment in a yoga class. So you can expect it if you ever go to one. Is that I'm pressing this energy back. And I have to ask him, does this feel okay? Good. Thank you. Good. And so I'm just basically lengthening his spine, putting more weight into his feet. And it's really a whole body stretch. So he's lengthening his neck. He's also lifting his kneecaps, activating the quadriceps. And then I'm going to ask him to really spread his fingers. Yeah, when we spread our fingers and we really press into our palms, our thumb, and our pointer, we're really activating more muscles, not just in the arms, but all of these are connected to the heart and the core. Good. So this can actually feel very intense. And I know he's feeling a little warm here. So I'm going to have him take a break and bring his knees to the ground. And he'll either do cat and cow or he'll find variations. So Dennis, maybe sway your hips left to right or 
you know, find a, a wiggle waggle, a ziggle zaggle, <laughs> move naturally. Mm. Yeah, so I kind of like doing circles in my hips or even finding kind of S shapes in my shoulders. And again, as beginners, we really want to keep reminding ourselves to go at our own pace, really listen to the breath, but also pay attention to alignment. So still knees under the hips, wrists under the shoulders. That's it. Good. So Dennis, whenever you're ready, we're going to come back to down dog. Good. Down dog is also known in other traditions as triangle pose which is different from a triangle that we are gonna practice today. But the point is, you want your body to look like a triangle, shape of a triangle, right? So the bottom line is your mat, and the other two sides are your, you know, your legs, and then your arms back is the other side of the triangle. Good, so from here, maybe just walk your feet towards your hands. And then this is a forward bend, so get your feet hip width apart, and then you're welcome to grab your elbows and maybe soften your knees. Hmm. This is your standard forward bend. Again, many of us, especially if you're a beginner, you might have a lot of tightness in the hamstring. And if this is what it looks like today, as long as you're feeling a stretch in the hamstrings, that's all we're going for, right? We're going for function over form in our practice. And that's why we say to really honor your body. You don't want to actually want to force your body to look a certain way that maybe your teacher looks. <laughs> um, you'd rather just really feel into the benefits of the pose. So this one, feel a lot of opening in the backs of the legs, as well as there's calming of the mind as we bring our heart over our head. This is one type of an inversion, right? Going upside down, like our head is upside down, which really brings a calmness to our brain and our breath. Good. So for a forward bend, I'm gonna ask Dennis to put a little bit more weight over his toes, less over his heels. Yeah. Good. And he can still hold on to his elbows, but when he does this, he is allowing more of a stretch in the back of the body. And just know that your hamstrings are definitely connected to your lower back. So if you know you have lower back issues, many of us do from sitting, standing, and walking, you really want to open up your hamstrings through forward bends. Good. So Dennis, slowly take your time. Maybe take your hands to your shins and do a half bend, right? So lengthen the spine. Good. Find a regular breath and then slightly bend the knees and then roll up, come to standing. Good. Bring the feet together, big toes touch, heels slightly apart. And this is what we call Tadasana or mountain pose, right? So let's really open up the heart, turn the palms face forward. And you're at the front of your mat. And Tadasana is really a time to see what's the difference between the left and the right side of the body. Do we lean to one side? Is there more pain in your left side or your left back today? Or there's a little tightness in my neck. It's also a time to really feel energy moving through the body. Hatha, right? the opposites of sun and moon, or left and right, up and down, north and south. So just in a simple standing pose, can you feel really rooted into the earth, but also lengthening up towards the heavens? Yeah. And can we really open up our heart, but also shoot energy down through the fingertips? And then can we breathe? <laughs> Yeah, and then we're gonna lift energy from the pit of the belly, right? So you might hear me say, bring your navel towards your spine. 
It's really activated there. That also helps you to lift up and also become lighter in your being, right? Instead of kind of just dumping around and slouching around in life, right? We use our bandha to really lift and become lighter, enlighten ourselves. Yeah. Good. Tadasana, as simple as it may feel or look, simple standing, if you actually hold this for some time with true activation and intention, it feels like some work, <laughs> feels like the yoga, some concentration focus. Good. Okay, so from there, we also want to know where your center is. Your spine, but your midline. Things always want to work from center. You want to know where your center is to help you balance, to really come from strength. And you're straining your uh, extremities throughout the poses. So we'll see that as we go on. So here we go. From here, let's inhale. Take the arms up to the sky. Let's exhale, forward bend. Maybe uh, your hands touch the floor, or maybe you can grab your elbows, or you can also put your hands on your shins. So inhale, lengthen the spine, look forward. Exhale, plant the hands, walk the feet back, come to plank position, and then from here, you're actually gonna drop the knees and come all the way down to the ground, to your belly. Good, from here, you really wanna keep your elbows nice and tight by your body, you're gonna lift your heart, open your heart into a cobra. Also like a snake, right? A snake pose. Good, so from here, you're gonna breathe, but I'm gonna ask you and ask Dennis to take his shoulders away from his ears, yeah. And maybe I would even ask for Dennis to drop down a little bit closer to the floor. Yeah, drop your belly a little bit down, yeah, but open your heart, yes. Good, and whenever he's ready, he's gonna exhale, come to the knees, down dog. Good. Yeah, so really, our cobra, and you'll feel it, it's a lot of shoulders. It's also where we can notice that our patterns of holding and tension. A lot of us have this tendency to kind of slouch, especially over our computer, our driving, <laughs> right? Any backbend heart opener is really about undoing that or bringing harmony to that space. And I know Dennis works at a desk and a computer a lot. And he's a surfer, you can tell. Um, and so, you know, you surfers really need that um, in your shoulders to really start opening that up. So we're gonna try that again. He's gonna come back to plank. Plank position like a plank of wood. Nice, strong, straight body. Beautiful. Wrists are under shoulders, right? He's gonna come all the way down to the ground. He's gonna set up for cobra. I might even ask him to, for his particular body to draw his hands a little bit more, uh, more back. Yeah, more here. And then I'm gonna take his elbows close to his body. And then whenever he's ready, he's gonna inhale. Just his heart, yeah. Good, and maybe that's where he stays. And he's gonna breathe, elbows stay in. So his shoulders are really opening here and he's lengthening his neck and he's breathing, good breathing. Good, and whenever he's ready, he's gonna come to down dog. Yeah, so down dog, that's a counter pose essentially, right? It feels better. <laughs> After we open our heart, we can just kind of come to balance and close it out again. And then we're gonna try that one more time and then we're just gonna feel how that feels for us to really open the shoulders. Dennis, does this feel okay for you? Cool. So plank, and then he's gonna lower all the way down to the ground. Good, and then let's open the heart one more time. Good, again, if you're at home, try to make sure your shoulders are away from your ears. All of our bodies are different, right? So if you wanna come up higher, come higher. For Dennis's body, he's gonna stay here. Good, and then when he's ready, he's a down dog, right? So for my body, I have a little bit more flexible back right, naturally. So this might be my cobra, right? And it might be natural for you at home as a beginner. But, you know, all of our bodies are made differently. Good, so we're here. Good, so from here, we're gonna do our basic pose of warrior one. Let's inhale our right leg between our two hands. 
From here, we're gonna drop the left heel to the ground. Our left foot is about 45 degrees. We're gonna inhale, arms up to the sky. Good. So from here, even if it doesn't seem easy or normal, you're still gonna draw your left hip towards the, the wall in front of you. Yeah, so I'm just gonna readjust Dennis here because he's still learning the practice like all of you. So this left foot is gonna be a little bit more 45. Dennis, <laughs> so make it a little bit more 45 degrees. Yeah, so it's pointing that way, yeah. By making the foot 45, you can draw the left hip a little bit more forward and that just brings more lengthening and opening to the front of the left leg. That's it, and he's breathing. And again, he has really tight shoulders, but he's gonna do his best to lift his arms up and strong parallel straight elbows. Good. Left hip forward, right hip slightly back. That's still lengthening that front leg. That front leg is about 90 degrees. Yeah. So just a little bit there. Good, and that's a lot of work, right? So when he's ready, he's gonna open it up to warrior two. And so you'll see his backside here for now. <laughs> Yeah, and the warrior two, he's actually gonna open up his hips towards this wall. It's a little different, very different from warrior one because the hips are facing that way, now they're facing this way. Good. So whenever you're ready, Dennis, you're gonna just take your right hand down to the ground and then take the left hand, step it back. And we'll come back to plank and then you can come down to the ground and then inhale, cobra. Good, and this is just an easy flow. Exhale, down dog. That's it. And then we'll switch sides. Now you can see him from the front side. Let's take the left foot front, and we're gonna go to warrior one here. So you already see he did his 45 degree foot. I'm just gonna help and support him there. And then his right hip's gonna just make a little effort forward. Left hip comes back. Beautiful. Then his arms come up as best as they can without strain, but definitely finding a healthy edge. And he's breathing. And if he can, look up and really lengthen through these elbows. So straighten those elbows. Beautiful. And then he's going to exhale into warrior two. So hips now open towards you, towards the camera. Good. And about 90 degrees in your left knee, right? If it doesn't feel good for you today, just come a little bit more gentle in the hips and the knee. You can just float the arms, right? So there's, you don't have to try so much in your warrior, right? Just be really strong in your center. Yep, that's it. And the way I describe the arms in warrior two is imagine there's a broomstick along you and it's really strong and straight. Beautiful. And then whenever he's ready, he's gonna kinda cartwheel the hands down, come back to plank position. Good, and come to the floor. Good, open the heart here. Good, exhale, down dog. Beautiful. And then from the down dog, you're just gonna come to a child's pose. Child's pose is a great pose to know, so especially if you start going to classes and they're moving a little too fast for you or they're just doing things that don't feel good or right for you, you can always come to child's pose and just rest. Good, and he's breathing. This is one way to do, do child's pose. Another way is to bring your arms in front of you. Yeah. But I think it'll feel better if, for him right now if his hands are by his feet. Right? Is that what you want to do? Yeah. yeah, great. So again, so just doing what feels good and right for your body right now. I would say that that might be the best lesson I could give you as a yogi, no matter what level you are, is do what feels right for you, right? And whether you're doing yoga or not, how can you just always do what feels right for you in your life? Good, so we're gonna sit up when you're ready. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna sit onto our booty and take our legs straight ahead. Um, if you have a strap, you can also use like a belt or a strong 
string that you have at home. But you can find these yoga straps either online or at a store anywhere from, you know, 10 to $20. They're made of, you know, proper material. So this is our standard forward bend, Paschimottanasana, and it really helps to, you know, hook the strap right around the balls of the feet or the arches. Yeah. And to properly get into our forward bend, we really want to actually engage the pit of the belly, and then we really want to lengthen from the lower back. Right? The tendency, what you might do or what you're already doing right now is sort of sitting back in the lower back and then just kind of reaching forward. I would want you to really sit up and then lengthen from the hips. That's it. Good, Dennis. Good. And then that's what the strap is there for. Is the hands can come closer towards your feet. And you're going to breathe. Good. And I like to say for Paschimottanasana, the seated forward bend that we're doing, to do it anywhere from 10 to 20 breaths, maybe a minute if you can. It's really opening the backside of the body. Some of you, if you're pretty flexible, you can grab your feet. You know, and ultimately keeping the integrity of the pose Maybe you'll bring your belly towards your thighs. Maybe you'll bring your head towards your shins. Most importantly, are we breathing? If you notice you're straining, right? Pull back. That's your healthy edge where you're still you're testing your boundaries, but you're riding that edge, right? And over time, your healthy edge keeps more and more and more. You start to open or you start to strengthen. Yeah. And then your edge keeps moving further. Good. Slowly inhale up when you're ready. That's a good one. Good one for all of us. But for the next one, let's do a Janushashasana, which you know, means head to the knee. So let's bend our right foot. Sorry, don't bend your right foot. <laughs> bend your right knee. Take your foot towards your uh, left inner thigh. It's up to you, you don't have to touch the thigh. I personally like to keep a 90 degree shape here. So I like to use the strap, so we'll use the strap again, Dennis. And that'll help us again maintain the integrity of the pose and the fold. So we'll stay long in the spine, and then it's a slight twist, so draw your belly button towards your thigh. Good, and then just notice where you have any unnecessary tension. Soften the, the grip in your hands, or soften the shoulders. And then let's breathe. And here you're actually really actively drawing the knee down, and I'll show you what the adjust would look like to help you understand the energy of the pose. So I'll put my foot here to really draw the knee back and down. But I'm going to lengthen him from here. Yeah. So again, we're understanding this merging of opposites, right? Or the lengthening of the opposites. One more deep breath here. And then inhaling up when you're ready. So what we do to one side, we do to the other. So we'll take that left foot in. Take that left knee back. Again, use your strap if you have one. If not, you can always just reach for your foot. Maybe this is what you do if you can't go so far. Maybe you can tent your fingers. Or maybe you can. Just grab your foot. And again, draw your belly button towards the thigh. Maybe your head to the knee, right? Janushashasan. That's what that means. <laughs> Beautiful. So similarly, 
Release unnecessary tension in the hands or the shoulders. Draw that left knee back and down. But then lengthen from the lower back, particularly the lower left back on this one. Good. And then taking your time. Kind of slowly inhaling it up. Yeah. Okay, so take your time. You're gonna come back to your hands and your knees. And then you're gonna slowly come back into down dog. And we're gonna move into pigeon pose. Right, which can be really, it looks a little bit different in every body, but we'll try it. So I like to say, bring your right knee towards the right corner of your mat. Maybe you'll end up on your outer shin. Then your, if you can, left of the front leg is on the ground. So we're all different here. Some of us will put the blanket under our seat or our thigh. And some of us actually can't come up like this, and that's okay. You can already feel the hip opener here, yeah? Does that feel okay, Dennis? Yeah, so he's nice and has the front of his left leg back, right, instead of opening it up to one side. And he can feel it. Where do you feel it, Dennis? Definitely. So this is our hip opener. And from here, you're going to just slowly forward fold. You might come onto your elbows or forearms, or you can just gently rest on your forearms and just relax here. You know, many of us have very fast paced, stressful lives, chaotic, overwhelming sometimes. And a lot of our tension can be held in our hips, just basic, from basic movements. So our hip openers really can allow us to relax, you know, coming into the breath, letting go of any tension we've just picked up from the day. So you really want to use this time, especially this particular pose, to just <sighs> exhale. Yeah. Good, Dennis. Take your time. You slowly come back up. Pick up that left foot. We'll come to down dog if that's easy. However you want to come out of it, though. You can walk out the feet. I tend to like doing a down dog between sides. So then we'll inhale, bring the left knee. Same thing, different side. To the left corner of the mat. And again, I like having a blanket under me. Again, this might hurt your lower back, so just don't even try to pick yourself up. Just stay here. And then when you're ready to exhale, come and fold forearms, and then maybe rest your forehead on the forearms. It actually calms you down a little bit if you have contact with your forehead and your arms or pillow or the floor. There's something that calms the brain. And you can feel it. Don't take my word for it. Yeah. Now, if you don't feel much here, you can always find variations, right? You can really pick yourself up. It's a different but similar hip opening stretch, a little bit more strengthening involved. Maybe you take your arms up. Yeah, you can also do twists here. You know, this one really deepens my hip stretch when I twist a little bit. So you're welcome to just play with it. And Dennis, if some things don't feel good or right for you, then just come back to where you were. But yeah, I like the twist because it really gets a little bit deeper. Yeah. All right. So whenever you're ready, slowly come back to down dog. Hmm. That's it. And then we're going to take our time. We're going to come to a seated position. And then we're going to come lay on our back. 
And from here, we're gonna hug our knees into our belly, rock left to right. Hmm, this should already feel a little bit relaxing, more relaxing, right? Because that's the thing with our yoga practice is we come into our breath, we come to a quiet space, we move, we get a little bit of warmth, do some strengthening. Then we come into deeper stretches on the ground, a little bit less effort. And then we start to really cool down and come into an even more relaxed, soft space. Good. Let's do some windshield wipes here. So we're going to drop our feet to the ground, but we're going to take the feet to the wide edges of the mat. And that's what makes the difference in this stretch is the width of the feet. It's a different stretch if your feet are touching. So take the feet to the wide edges of your mat and maybe just relax your arms out to the side. You can also grab your elbows above your head, whichever feels good and right for you tonight, today. We're gonna inhale to center, exhale down towards the right floor. Good. You can see what opens there, a lot of that front hip, quad, lower back. Good. Inhale up to center, down to the left floor. This time you can close your eyes if you want. Good. And then inhale up, down to the right. Take your time and then go at your own pace. You know, your body might just have a lot of fire, so you just want to move a little faster. Or you really have some deep tightness, so you just kind of want to hold a, you know, hold the stretch at one side. So just do that and enjoy it. And then take deep breaths. I always encourage in the deep relaxation part to do an open mouth exhale. Good. Just a few more, both sides. Make sure you even it out. Good. Then we'll come back to center. And we're going to do our figure four or a thread the needle pose. So you'll take the right ankle over the left knee. And then you'll interlace fingers behind you. And then draw both legs towards your belly. Try to keep your sacrum on the ground, right? Keep your spine long. And draw the right knee away from you. And you can feel again. This is almost a variation of what you stretched in your pigeon pose. Just a little bit different. You're laying on your back. Yeah, might be easier for some of you. There's not so much of that strain in the lower back. Good, big exhale. And one more breath when you're ready. And then we'll release it to the ground, switching sides. Take left ankle over the right, take it in. Good, try to keep the head on the ground. And again, coming into a softer space now, you can close your eyes. You can feel a little bit more soft, relaxed, right, things that Felt so hard before, maybe not that hard right now, right? Maybe it has a less of a grip on us, even if we're still thinking about it or bothered about it. There's just a softness. There's some space to, to play in, to rest in. Big inhale, <sighs> exhaling. Yeah. And release when you're ready, and we'll come into final resting pose, which we call Shavasana. Shavasana is also a translation of corpse pose. So your legs are straight ahead. Great way to come into it, though, is really readjust the shoulder blades. So lift maybe the shoulders off the ground and then get them flat again. Good. And then take some time to sort of wiggle out the feet and the calves and get your ankles a little bit wider than the hips. I'll just come help Dennis come into this. So I always like to help spread the shoulder blades flat here. 
Make sure that your head is balanced equally, left and the right sides, and the neck comes longer. Palms face up. He's already got his feet wider than his hips, but I'm just gonna help him loosen his lower back a little bit more. Just swaying him a little bit. And if you have a friend at home, they can help you do this. And this is our final resting pose. And I encourage you to stay in resting or shavasana for 10 to 30 minutes maybe. <laughs> Many of us need the rest, especially if you're coming to yoga. I really hope you found rest with us today, some relaxation and you know, learning a little bit more about the practice so you can start going to the studio or um, you can just start practicing you know, more advanced things on your own. Um, we have all sorts of videos here at Heart Alchemy Yoga. Please make sure you subscribe to us. We're at youtube.com slash heartalchemyyoga. And if you like us, if you like any of the videos, please thumbs up. And we would love to hear your comments, suggestions, even your complaints. <laughs> and we do make custom videos. So please let us know if you want to see more of something, um, maybe some inversions, arm balances, or um, working on pranayama, uh, bandhas, drishti, any of those. So please give us your comments. And um, again, my name is Gloria Baracchio. I'm at thespringsla.com. We are in the downtown Los Angeles Arts District. So we hope to see you again. Namaste.